A basic concern in capacity management is to figure out how much capacity we need. Whenever we are talking about capacity management, we are inherently talking about demand also in the same breath. Capacity and demand go hand in hand, and we cannot manage capacity in a vacuum without referring to demand. If I have a process that produces the same thing over and over, I can figure out the required capacity by dividing my total demand by the capacity of each unit. For example, if I am running an office with a printing demand of 100 pages per minute, and each printer has a capacity of 25 pages per minute, I need to install four printers to meet my demand. Alternatively, I can get two moderately fast printers with a capacity of 50 pages per minute each. Or I can get a single super fast printer with a capacity of 100 pages per minute. Let's extend this calculation to a process that produces a range of outputs. Let us say I am interested in running a landscaping and lawn mowing business. I sign up a number of customers and categorize them into three types, A, B, and C. Each of these types of customers has a somewhat different need in terms of size of lawn, edge trimming, shrubs, etc. However, I am able to serve all these needs using a standard crew that is equipped with a set of lawn mowers, edge trimmers, and leaf blowers, etc. I start out by estimating the demand. I have signed up 50 customers with type A houses, 100 customers with type B houses, and 250 customers with type C houses. I estimate that the amount of time it will take to service a type A house is two labor hours. Likewise, the time required for a type B house is one labor hour, and for a type C house is half a labor hour. Using this information, I can calculate the total processing time I need. The type A houses will take 100 hours, the type B houses will take another 100 hours, and the Type-C houses will take another 125 hours. In total, I will need 325 hours of processing. Assuming that I will mow each lawn once a week, this is my demand per week. Next, I need to figure out the capacity of my resources. Let me start with my employees. Each employee has a capacity of 40 labor hours per week. Therefore, to get 325 hours of processing time, I will need 8.125 employees. Well, 8 employees I can get, but where do I find an eighth of an employee? Hopefully, I will be able to get a part-time employee to work one-eighth of 40 hours, or 5 hours each week. If I am unable to find someone for 5 hours, Perhaps I will have to hire someone for a full day, or eight hours, and end up with a little extra capacity. Now that I've planned my employee capacity, let me look into the other resources I need. I am planning to equip each employee with a lawn mower. It looks like I will have to get nine lawn mowers. I don't suppose eight full-time and one part-time lawn mower will work. Next, let me look into edge trimmers and leaf blowers. Rather than equip each employee, I think it will be a good idea to give each team a set of these. But how many employees to a team? Since on any given day I will have either 8 or 9 employees, let me make 3 teams of 3 employees each. I will need 3 edge trimmers and 3 leaf blowers. How many pickup trucks will I need? I think one per team will be good, but it will have to be an extended cab type to accommodate three persons. Also, each truck should be big enough to accommodate, or pull a trailer that accommodates, three lawn mowers. Each truck also needs a ramp for loading and unloading the lawn mowers, a gas can, a tool kit, a couple of spare lawn mower blades, a set of yellow cones, a set of dust masks, 
and so on. Finally, let's not forget, don't we need a porta potty on each truck? What did you say? Just go in the bushes? Do you want me to get arrested or something? As part of planning my capacity requirements, I need to look at all the various resources that I will need in order to meet the customer demand. Given that all of these requirements are related to the number of employees, we can piggyback off our capacity requirement calculation of 8.125 employees. Now I am in business. One day, while I'm mowing one side of the lawn, my employee, John, mows the other side. Suddenly, I hear a loud thunk. John, John, are you okay? He's fine, but the lawnmower is not. He hit a rock, and the blade is all bent out of shape. So we go get the toolbox and a spare blade and set things right. The two of us lost 15 minutes each, or half an hour in total. Unfortunately, I didn't plan any extra capacity for that mishap. A couple of houses later, I noticed that my other employee, Will, has disappeared. I go searching for him and see him hanging from a tree branch. What's the matter, Will? If you feel the urge to hug a tree, why can't you do it at ground level? Suddenly, I find out why he's up the tree. I'm up the tree in a hurry myself. It's the homeowner's dog. He's a vicious one. Fortunately, I have my cell phone with me. Unfortunately, I'm holding on with both hands, so I can't reach into my pocket. It's going to be a long while before the homeowner comes by to call the dog off. Unfortunately, I didn't plan any extra capacity for that event either. Then we drive to another house. Just as we reach, it begins to pour. Good thing the radio works in this truck. But the three of us just lost half an hour each. That's one and a half hours wasted. Unfortunately, I didn't plan any extra capacity for that event either. When it stops raining, we start mowing. But the grass is too wet and it takes much longer than expected. Unfortunately, I didn't plan any extra capacity for that event either. As you can see, I need to plan some extra capacity to accommodate such events and uncertainties. I call that a capacity cushion. The greater the level of uncertainty in my process, the greater the capacity cushion I need to build into my operation. Another reason to build in capacity cushion is to be able to handle demand swings. The greater the unevenness of my demand pattern, the greater the capacity cushion I need. For example, I also clear snow in the winters. That winter demand is quite volatile and depends on snowstorms. For lawn mowing, however, I am not planning to handle sudden demand swings. No walk-in or call-in customers. All of a sudden, a homeowner comes out and starts talking to me. It seems her roses used to be on the other side of the house, but someone told her they need more sun, so she moved them to this side of the house. Now someone else told her they're getting too much sun. She looks at me and thinks I know something about plants and asks me what she should do. How should I handle this situation? Let me give you two scenarios. Suppose my company's name is the Lonicurists. To go with the fancy name, of course, I also charge a fancy price. My employees and I drive up in an immaculate truck wear uniforms, and always say, sir, ma'am, etc. My customers expect a high level of customer service. Do you think I should continue to talk to the homeowner about her roses? For sure, she's going to chew up 15 minutes of my time. But it's well worth it if she continues to use my services at my exorbitant prices. We do, after all, offer a range of value-added services, including rose garden maintenance, I need to keep a little extra capacity cushion for such events. On the other hand, suppose my company's name is the Cheapskate Lawn Cuttery. I charge a cut rate price. My truck is all rusted and the muffler has needed repair for over a year now. 
My employees wear t-shirts and tattoos, not uniforms. Do you think I should talk to the homeowner about her roses? How about I say, Ma'am, firstly, you're paying me to mow the lawn, not to chit-chat about the roses. Secondly, if you're stupid enough to think I know anything about roses, just because I have a rose tattoo, you really don't deserve the roses. As you can see, the more my process has the characteristics of a line flow, the smaller the capacity cushion I need. More low-cost focus, less demand volatility, higher volumes, more standardization, less process uncertainty, less customer service, etc. In addition, high capital intensity also drives the need for greater equipment utilization or lower capacity cushion. On the other hand, the more my process has the characteristics of a flexible flow, the larger the capacity cushion I need. More value added and higher prices, more demand volatility, lower volumes, more customization, more process uncertainty, higher customer service, lower capital intensity, etc. For now, let us say I settle on a 10% capacity cushion. That means although my employees come in for 40 hours each week and I pay them for 40 hours each week, I expect that they will be idle 10% of the time. This 10% idle time is not due to the regular breaks, lunch time, and fatigue, etc. Breaks and lunch time are not even counted as part of my capacity. So how can I discount them as capacity cushion? The 10% idle time is not because my employees are being lazy either. That would be inefficiency, not capacity cushion. Here, this 10% idle time is planned underutilization of my resources which is built into my process design in order to serve a certain purpose. With a 10% cushion, each employee only gives me 36 hours of productive work each week. In my capacity calculation, I have discounted the 40 in the denominator by 10%. In view of this cushion, I now need 9.028 employees. I think I'll settle for 9 employees nine lawn mowers, three pickup trucks, etc. If I settle for nine employees, will I still have the desired 10% cushion? Obviously, I will have a slightly smaller cushion. My capacity utilization will be 90.277%. My capacity cushion will be 9.723% instead of the desired 10%. But I think I can live with that.